Hey traders, Roggy here, and in this update, we're going to discuss why I'm watching the NASDAQ so closely and why the tech weighting has never been more important. I don't mean just today or this week or in this season of our trading, but generally speaking, as passive investing becomes more and more impactful, why we have to keep an eye on tech. Now, I do want to mention, and we'll talk about this uh, tomorrow when I'm with uh, you all in the Simpler Futures live trading, but let me give you a little bit of insight into what we're going to cover. We've got the 8.30 economic release of core retail sales and retail sales uh, coming out at 8.30, which is going to set the tone in many ways for the 9.30 open. So just be aware it's usually a two-parter when we've got an 8.30 a.m., uh, in this case, data point, which is a red-hot, high-impact hot zone, the first reaction is going to happen around 8.30. But then remember, equities cannot respond. Futures can, but equities can't. So we'll see another 9.30, that second response. So remember, whatever we see at 8.30 and in the following, say, 5 to 10 minutes, don't be surprised to see an extension of that at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. All right. Then remember, the market's going to have to place their bets because here comes Fed Powell at 1.30 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Now, why am I so interested in the NASDAQ? It has more to do with the weighting of XLK and, and really even XLC than it does the NASDAQ or the QQQ generally. Now remember, in the Dow, number one weighted sector, XLF financials, followed by XLK tech. Tech, by way of XLK, is a conversation about Apple and actually Microsoft, all right? So that's where the impact of tech extends beyond QQQ or NASDAQ futures. Of course, XLK is the number one weighted sector within the S&P, followed by, again, we have financials, healthcare, uh, communications, also a big part of the S&P. So tech, regardless of which of the big three indices we're talking about, NASDAQ futures, Dow futures, or S&P, has a disproportionate influence on the behavior of these trends. And trends they are. But the reason I'm looking at the NASDAQ is of the three, the NASDAQ has been the one that, let, let's, let's not go into rotation because that is hugely misguided. This is a little bit of stagnation because rotation suggests that one sector or one index is actually pulling back while another one is accelerating. I'm not looking at this in that light at all. I'm looking at this move in the NASDAQ as rotation, but rather as some stagnation as other markets are now coming to the party. This is a participation conversation, all right? Now, if there is a, a part of tech that's dragging it lower, it's XLY, it's consumer discretionary, led by Amazon and Tesla. Amazon's had a hard time getting out of its own way. Tesla had some news this morning that sent it lower. Likely will be bought. Really, Tesla's an interesting narrative right now between Kathy Wood and the Kathy Wood fans of the world out there and uh, Michael Burry and the Michael Burry fans out of the world, uh, of the world out there. He's short, she's long. Uh, he said, she said, I'm betting on Tesla continuing up in its very fresh uptrend, which should help the XLY once Amazon figures out which side of the 200 period exponential and the first of the year anchored VWAP it wants to trade at. Now, probably the easiest way, lowest cost way, lowest risk way to play this would be XLY, but for us futures traders, that's really that missing link to what could be higher highs in tech. So Yes, our relative outperformers by way of Facebook and Google and XLC, Apple, Microsoft, and XLK are very important. But what's dragging this market? It's XLY, it's Amazon, it's Tesla. Those start moving higher, look out. And then that then is going to have you know, a ripple effect across the Dow and the S&P. And that's why I think right now watching the NASDAQ is going to be so very important. And again, remember that when we're looking at the NASDAQ, we're also considering some of these individual sectors. Pullback buys in XLK and pullback buys in XLC, while this may not be a traditional futures approach, 
definitely on this futures traders radar. I'll see you all in the next update. Hey traders, Raggy from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.